Yeah, I'm Mr. Poop. <laughs> That's right. I'm a, I'm a poop puppet. Um, yeah, but I'm important because uh, I like to make people sick. No, you don't. Stop it. What? I do like make people sick. Don't listen to him. He's a horrible thing. No, I'm not. I'm important. I am a poop. Yeah. So, <laughs> so was watching. The funny thing is, is that you get into our workshops. Right you, get, <laughs> you get adults. So the first day they come and they're all dressed up in their, you know, their jackets and their suits and, you know, with their little notebooks. And they're just like, okay, this is a workshop and I'm going to learn how to do this. And the funny thing is, by the end of the week, when we've taken them through all these crazy, silly exercises and puppet buildings and art, they've they've changed into children and they're like laughing and talking and singing. Let's learn how our next guest gets up, dress up and show up on purpose. Enjoy the episode. Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lunid. And today, you know what? I have a phenomenal soul coming on here today. And we are going to laugh. We're going to giggle. And we're going to have some fun because Lisa Buckley is an accomplished professional puppeteer. You hear that? You heard that right. Puppeteer and a puppet builder. And she has been doing this for over 25 years. You may have seen her stuff because she has been in films and TV shows, including ALF, Men in Black, The Muppets, and Sesame, Sesame Street, where she performed Betty Lou, along with a wide variety of other program characters. I mean, she's just a delight, right? Her talent has brought her to humanitarian aid hotspots, including Cam- Cambodia, Kenya, Bangladesh, I mean, Sierra Leone and Iraq while working with No Strings International, a nonprofit that delivers life-saving workshops and films to children in crisis around the world. Do you see why I heart her? Do you see why I had to bring her on here? So, you know, I, with no further ado, let me bring her on. Lisa, welcome to the show. Good morning. Hello. I, I brought a few of my friends with me. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> buddies. <laughs> They totally insisted. <laughs> <laughs> that is phenomenal. I love what you do, and you just take it out of just the fun and uh, performance to actually helping humanitarian. And that is quite exciting. So before we dive in, Lisa, tell us about how in the world did this get started? Well, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I never set out to be a puppeteer. That was the furthest thing from my mind. I always wanted to be um, a scientist, a wildlife biologist, a zoologist. Growing up, my heroes were uh, Jane Goodall and Mm -hmm. Diane Fossey and Jacques Cousteau. Instead of rock stars, posters, I had like animal posters on my wall. So I was just, I'm just going to do animals. I'm going to be an animal scientist. That's it. Don, my life is complete. (laughs) (laughs) Then I get to college and I start taking science classes and everything that I would need. And I realize... (laughs) don't like science. I don't like it at all. (laughs) And I wasn't very good at it. And it wasn't interesting. And and I realized that I want my animals to talk. I want them to have (laughs) clothes and cars and jobs. Personalities. (laughs) Personalities. I want them to be my friends. So I was very lucky. I went to um, a school in Connecticut, Southern Connecticut State University. Now it's University Go Owls. And they yeah. had um, two puppet classes. And, and the funny thing was, it was a, I think it was a semester, but it was six credits, which is a lot mm-hmm. for a semester. And I took that class. And I tell you, you know, when you you hit just what you should be doing or something that just makes sense to you or something that you're just destined to be all the bells and whistles are going off and my heart's like singing. It's like, this is it. It's so funny and silly and crazy. And you can make a living doing this. <laughs> well, <laughs> 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 sort of. <laughs> um, so then I just, it was all things puppets. I just wanted to do puppets and making puppets, doing birthday parties and library shows and anything that had to do with puppets. And then just, you know, how your career just goes along and and you just focus on one thing. The universe says, okay, I see what you're doing there. I'm going to get you all this stuff. And you're passionate about it and it's making you laugh. And I think the universe likes when we laugh. (laughs) And 
so things started to fall into place. I, I would get auditions on things and um, like ALF and Sesame Street, it just sort of all followed each other. And it was crazy. It just, I didn't really have to really what, worry about it. I mean, I did, of course, because you have to make a living, but it just seemed to unfold organically. So I was very lucky in that respect and working with some of the best puppeteers in the world. And it was wonderful, but it just wasn't, 100% what I wanted. I mean, the puppetry, yes, but I wanted to use puppets to to help people and to um, work in that capacity. Yeah. So fortunately, the Sesame Street people, they were forming this group called No Strings International with um, some people from the UK, Johnny McBlade and Rosie Waller, who were like these amazing aid workers, incredible angels. These people are angels. And we started doing films and it was right after, it was right before right after 9-11 and it was when the bombing of Afghanistan was going to start and they were and it was all centric on children it's all children central helping children that's sort of our our motto and they wanted to make sure that the children knew about landmines and how to avoid them Mm -hmm. and so they used puppets and telling these stories and having they made a little film about landmines with puppets and I was like this this is it this is talk about heart singing this is what I want to do because the power of puppetry is just unbelievable so it's just that's sort of my my story and I'm right where I I need to be right now is is doing the humanitarian aid work with No Strings International so I am so happy so happy for you I am my heart is singing for you because there's something in the art of storytelling and that's what you get to do yes you you get to tell stories every day with the puppets and I I absolutely understand when you said your heart is singing when you find Mm -hmm what your purpose is. I, there's a really good quote, and I think it's Les Brown that said it. Um, there, are, there are two important days in your life, the day you were born and the day you found out why. Oh, oh my gosh, I got chills. That is so true. That you know? is so true. And sometimes it's just what you didn't think it was. You just have to be open to whatever comes your way. You're like, puppets. And my parents were like, wait, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm playing with dolls? Yeah. Toys? <laughs> yeah, toys. Yes, because I'm a kid. And we're all just kids inside. So I we know. Have to, you have to be playful. The world is nuts, but you just bring the joy and the love and the playfulness, and it's going to be all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so your your work is really, really magical in that way. Do you create the puppets? Do you get a sewing machine and you're designing these characters, long nose, big ears? You're like putting the fun in there? <laughs> yes. Well, the funny thing is, is that the puppets that we do for the films are all made by ex-Muppet people and Sesame Street people. So they're brilliant and beautiful and amazing. But when you go to some of these countries, you can't have them make those kind of puppets they just don't have the supply so it's a lot of cardboard and socks and sticks and just paper and just very organic some in madagascar it was just like leaves and grass and they would weave these amazing amazing little things and they they've had no art classes so i know that art and the joy of art and creating is is in us all it's like it's like a natural part of our dna because when you give people the supplies and i'm i'm just really a voyeur i'm just i get to watch people um i'm not special i just get to bring stuff and go okay here's here's something that you can do see what you do and people are so creative oh my gosh humans are amazing 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 people and so like I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to ask you. I was just waiting, Lisa. I'm be like, the kid in me wants to yeah. see the show. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, I figured as much. I have a few uh, essentials here. Good. So the, the power of puppetry. The best thing about puppets is they can talk about subject matter that's a little difficult, like open defecation, (laughs) water sanitation and hygiene. Where do you, can you go to the bathroom that's safe so you're not transferring all types of diseases? So how do you make that interesting and fun and make it in a way that is getting the point across? So (laughs) I came up with a Mr. Poop puppet. And (laughs) yeah, I'm Mr. Poop. (laughs) That's right. I'm I'm a poop puppet. Um, yeah, but I'm important because uh, I like to make people sick. No, you don't. Stop it. What? I do like make people sick. Don't listen to him. He's a horrible thing. No, I'm not. I'm important. I am a poop. Yeah. So, <laughs> so watching, the funny thing is, is that you get into our workshops. Right 
<laughs> you get adults. So the first day they come and they're all dressed up in their, you know, their jackets and their suits and, you know, with their little notebooks. And they're just like, okay, this is a workshop and I'm going to learn how to do this. And the funny thing is by the end of the week, when we've taken them through all these crazy, silly exercises and puppet buildings and art, they've, they've changed into children and they're like mm -hmm. laughing and talking and singing with a Mr. Poop puppet. And there's no, and they come up with amazing stories. And they, in turn, will go work with kids or they'll train teachers. So we're more of a uh, training of teachers. So so a Mr. Poop is, is a great way to talk about open defecation, washing your hands, making sure that you don't come in from playing and not wash your hands because you can get very sick. And in yeah. the developing world, when you get diarrhea, it can, under five, it can kill you. So you definitely do not want that. And the other thing about puppets, and I'm just going to talk forever, Go ahead. <laughs> is you can make the unseen, like here is a germ puppet, he's a cholera. So you can actually have, you know, he's an evil cholera puppet. And you have Mr. Poop, who loves cholera, obviously, because that's, he loves making people sick. So they're telling stories of how they like to make children sick. And then you have the kids going, no, no you mm -hmm. have to wash your hands so you're putting the power into the kids to come up with the answers and the ideas of how to keep mr poop away even though he's fun and exciting and fun to play with he's a bad character <laughs> so so yeah so you can talk about and then well we have mr water and mr you know he's not <laughs> drinking water so he's not very good either so and oh my gosh i'll just show you everything yeah, <laughs> during please. the pandemic during um covid i made a, a coronavirus puppet so you know, to talk about that, to have washing your hands again and wearing your mask, even though we don't want to, but, you know, protecting other people. So it's just a fun way to talk about things that are nobody wants to talk about or it's difficult to talk about, but it's a fun way and it gets people so excited and it's so fun to watch them get passionate and excited about creativity and art and drama. And so I'm a very lucky person. You are. <laughs> and it's quite powerful because you're getting buy-in. Not just from the kids, from the teachers, because now they are part of the solution. They're, they're like, okay, I've got to take a part of this and, and play my role in making yeah. sure we are all safe. Yes. And that's, that's incredible. We, let's do that for the rest of the world. The world. I, I know. Uh, yes. And, and like what's happening in the Ukraine right now, yeah. uh, this is a perfect opportunity. Well, after it settles down, because puppetry is more the psychosocial end, because now it's more about shelter and, and you know, the things like food and shelter and sanitation, that's physical things they need. But afterwards, they're going to need more psychosocial support, and they're going to have to process this very heavy trauma. So puppets is a wonderful way to do that. Because like, if you talk to kids, they don't have the words to talk about their emotions. So you can make, you know, like, uh, emotion puppets, like anger and, and surprise. So it's a way for them to talk about how they feel but by, by using a puppet and the good thing is is that they don't have to look one-on-one -on -one with you they they look at their puppet or they hide behind their puppet and they can express their emotions in a much better way so it is it's, win -win. It's, it's, it's play therapy <laughs> yes that's exactly in, in psychology right. that's what we call it when we're working with kids and we're, we're engaging in playing with them but teaching them Yes. in the process and helping them express themselves and using the for the puppets to kind of point even if it's like a board of smiley face that's like play, being able to actually get them to express it's their so, emotion yes so you're, you're tapping into a lot with just puppets <laughs> i know i know and the activity of sitting together in a circle like the power of the circle which is is like an ancient symbol of how if we sit in a circle it's, we're all connected because we're all humans and so you're making puppets in a circle so there's an extra power on top of that power yeah, and you're yeah. talking and you're discussing and there's something about doing things with your hands when you want to talk about sensitive things and you don't have to look at anybody that you're able to express yourself better so it's just this beautiful medium that's so simple that's just a sock and you know piece of fabric and a stick and that's all it is and it becomes this rich thing i mean sometimes it scares me it's like wow yeah it's, it's a rich it's a rich experience absolutely yeah. i love that you said you you are like flabbergasted when you see the creativity that comes out of these people because in the right environment creativity can be fostered right can yeah. can grow can flourish and yes you provide that space you provide that safe space because it's, yeah. it's hilarious it's it's um lighthearted. it's yes. funny 
Yes, we do need to laugh a whole heck of a lot more. Yeah, and it's, I'm just always just amazed about the power of creativity in people and how we're just all artists and we're all just kids and just watching people transform from these very serious, you know, I'm, I'm head of the country and I'm, you know, the prime yeah. minister, but you give them a puppet and they're laughing and they're silly and they're singing and dancing. And it's like, yes, my work is done here. <laughs> I've made you into a child. <laughs> <laughs> What's the inner child out of you? Because it does reside in all of us. And yes. that's, that's the goal. And then that, that innocent childlike had dreams, had goals that were untented, Yes. not jaded no one had shut it down at one yes. point right they knew yes. they could do and be everything and then they grew up they get programmed their reality hits and sometimes that is scary and i know you you see that quite often so tell us um how has treating at-risk children with puppet therapy what has that, that taught you um so far well it's it's amazing it, it just it's sometimes it's overwhelming. There was a, a story from it was during the invasion of Syria, and we had trained a bunch of the, the social workers in one of our workshops, and they were working in Jordan, and it was the large refugee camp there. And they were very excited to go back with this new way of, of helping. They were, you know, this like, oh, yes, this could really work with our kids. So they went with the puppets and all the things that we taught them, and they were working with this young girl. She was young under 10 and she had seen her uncle get shot in front of her eyes so of course she was extremely shut down and, and traumatized and they were working with her and they were doing the puppets in one of the child-friendly spaces where they would come and get psychosocial support and she she wouldn't speak and they were like oh my gosh the puppets are not working so her time was up and she was being escorted out so she stops and she picks up one of the puppets she puts it in front of her face and in a puppet voice not her own voice she tells the whole story of how and they didn't really know everything all the all the details of how her uncle had been killed and you know where she was and what she felt and what she was doing and they were just like oh my gosh we, we have a doorway into helping her. So when they told us that story, I think we all just started crying. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting chills. Yeah, it was just so beautiful. I mean, heart wrenching, but at the same time, it was just so beautiful just knowing that there's a tool and then there's just such there's so many good people. I know we always talk about, oh, the world's crazy and there's so many bad. There's so many good people out there doing amazing. I mean, I see it. I just get to come with my, you know, puppets and stuff and you know ha 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 song and dance and then I leave but there's so many people that are doing amazing amazing things and millennials too I know we always yeah. the millennials but no 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 they're brilliant and they care so much they care I so believe much. that I believe that the yeah. scale is tipped to more good than they are bad we just happen to focus on the bad because exactly. that's what the media does right that's what the news is is designed to do always yeah that's true and it just shuts us down and then we get fearful and we're like we give up when no yeah. the world is a beautiful place there's way more good than bad yeah. yes yeah after hearing from you what i what i gathered is with the puppets and and with the little girl you just shared you gave that puppet gave her a voice Yes, the puppet gave her a voice. And that's not the first time I've heard that, too. I think there was a, uh, it was Haiti. It was the earthquake. And there was a girl who. I'm was, from Haiti. Are you really? Mm -hmm. I love Haiti. <laughs> the food is amazing. It's yeah, a yeah. beautiful country. I love it there. Yeah, we, it was the earthquake. 2010? Um, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yes. And the same thing. Uh, uh, we had a, a show about that, about trauma. And the same thing. She had seen her family die in the earthquake and she was not speaking shut down she saw the film we did and she started speaking so it's just waiting for that little what's the what's the little switch that's going to get get us into you helping you <laughs> or yeah. being there for you so yeah yeah that's, that's, that's quite something and i want to um, unwrap that a little bit more because we when we lose our voice we have we losing our, our ability to express ourselves or share mm -hmm. a common yes. common trait yes. now the what you're doing is giving people voices is, is it because they feel they can hide behind it or put it in front of their faces Oops. and and speak or is it something that they feel like um it's not really me therefore there's not much judgment i think it's i think it's both i think you're absolutely right yeah 
I think they can hide, which is great because we also do not only this, like the hand puppets, we also do the shadow puppets. So, you mm -hmm. you know, on the desk and you have the little screen and it's dark and then with a flashlight and that seems to help a lot of people who are extremely shy, first of all, especially in some of the countries where we go where the women don't really have a very strong voice or they're, you know, they're very hesitant to use it, but you, you give them a shadow screen and a flashlight and you cannot stop them. Yeah. <laughs> you have to say, okay, everyone, it's lunchtime. And they're like, no, it's like, woo, it's a, it's a gangbusters of things coming out of them, which is wonderful. And then what you can also do is you make them switch. So the female becomes the male character. And, and so it like it was a story about um, early marriage. And so the, the men all played the women so that they, in that little instance, they could see what the women were talking about and feeling. And they were, they came away going, oh, I never realized I never realized at 16 being married off is just so awful. Right. So it, it, it helps get the wheels turning and people thinking, wow, I kind of know what that feels like now through doing this little show. So yeah, so the stick puppets, the shadow puppets, the, the regular hand puppets, all different. Yeah. That's the good thing about puppets. There's so many different kinds. There's <laughs> different options. Yeah, they all serve yeah. the purpose. Yes, now, yes. you, you, do, you do a lot of majority of your work on um, in underdeveloped nations. What about in the States? What about here in the U.S.? What do you, how do you um, work I, it? I have done in some of the, um, in the schools, it was more going in and building, but I would love to do stuff here. I would. It just seems like the opportunities that I'm being called for are, seem to be, um, in other countries and and the NGO that I work with, they say they have to work in other countries because their money goes to them and they can't work in the US. So I'm trying to I'm trying to do a, a menstrual hygiene show yeah. for for girls and women in this country, you know, just to be able to talk about it yeah. in a better way and a safer way. So but I would love it. I love kids. I love I love just people. I love working with people. I love seeing people uh, discover themselves and discover their creativity it's always just like yes you got it <laughs> so how has that helped with covid being um virtual do you do virtual shows now i don't for the past two years i've been sort of just um working on on me and what i can bring like making this mm -hmm. puppet that was really good and doing videos with him that was really fun and yeah. then developing this menstrual hygiene show so i think i took the past two years and was just figuring out what what I could do next was sort of a, a downtime thing because mm -hmm. I yeah I mean we talked about doing zoom things but I'd rather be in person I'd rather wait till we can be in person I like that one-on-one -on -one more physical yeah we're in the same room okay everybody yeah. let's you know <laughs> yeah so more more in schools even corporate jobs you can be yeah you can go in and teach you know they have all these trainings right that the yeah. HR has to do what oh, better way to add more color yeah more, yes those. yes because it's storytelling yes. everyone loves a good storytelling everyone process good story yes and we all have a story we all have 10 stories yeah 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 that's so Get, true getting people <laughs> engaged <laughs> yeah, yeah let's do this <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell us about um what keeps you bubbly? You know, how do you get up, dress up and show up? What keeps you motivated, inspired to show up for the people you do all over the world? Uh, well, I love, I love humor. It's like I'm a big um, Three Stooges yeah. <laughs> fan and, and Abbott and Costello. So if I'm feeling a little blah, I'll put on something silly and funny like Nacho Libre, Jack Black, you know, anything to make myself laugh. And then that seems to get me out of it or nice brisk walk outside or powerful music music does it for me too just blasting some kind of music and then just trying to follow people that do inspiring things to make me say yes don't give up just keep going because we all have you know it's all like this mm -hmm. ebb and flow oh my gosh yeah so trying to stay in shape and trying to physically move and dance i'll just turn on loud music and just ah! <laughs> Release some energy. We are a bundle of energy. We got to release yes. that tension. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And try to stay away from the negative news, mm -hmm. which is difficult, but just try to say, okay, that's their take on it. But in between all that, there's like 200 people who are doing good things, or there's, you know, one person who made someone laugh that day or, you know, so it's that kind of thing just keeps yeah. me going and i'm just so excited to get back out there <laughs> yeah you and i both tell us about your morning routine 
Uh, let's see. What do I do in the morning? Oh, I'm, I'm awful. I just kind of like, all right, where's my coffee? <laughs> where's the tea? <laughs> but I, I do try to stretch and, and do things like that and, and, and try to read a lot of silly books and, and funny videos. I think that gets me going. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Stretching in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah getting the, whatever it takes to get your mind ready. Yes. And so for you, it's a lot of humor. You do, you're Fun. doing stretching, but you, you're watching those funny videos yes. to kind of get the serotonin back in your brain. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. And just, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of toys too. I, I, I go to the silly toy store and I buy these ridiculous things like you know, wind up pigeons and, you know, uh, grabby hand things. And I just have them all over the place. And I, you know, I just, Play with my toys <laughs> yeah get per- you, you you see their personality you have a slew of them behind you and they i can yes. tell they all have a different personality yes, <laughs> yes that's, that's cool I'm very quiet today i don't know why they're so quiet <laughs> <laughs> you know. tell us um how can we connect with you how can we find you oh yes oh on instagram please follow me on instagram because i love it <laughs> um it's at sattva creative arts s-a-t-t-v-a creative arts. Um, and my website is sattvacreativearts.com. And the No Strings website, which is a fabulous website because it describes everything and it, it's all the fantastic stories and the people that work on um, with No Strings. That's no strings international, um, dot UK. Yes, that's it. Because yeah, they're in the they're in the UK. So yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> This this has been phenomenal, Lisa. Thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Thank we you. Are, we're going to follow you. We're going to see, um, can't wait to see what you come up with. All the different shows. Um, where are you located? So people know. What oh, part I'm of the world are you? I'm You're in Connecticut, Connecticut East Coast. Yes. East okay. Coast. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a puppet school, UConn, the University of Connecticut has a whole, you can get a doctorate in puppetry there. So, and it's wonderful. If you like puppets and you want to know more about puppets, they're, they're amazing. Yeah. I didn't go there, but. <laughs> that, yeah. We are, we are going to follow your journey because we want to see how far you go. And we love to follow um, the, the work that humanitarian work you're, you're doing because you just have a giving and serving heart. And we mm-hmm. love that at, at Best Morning Routine. We love to give back in that way. And so we'll, we'll mm-hmm. definitely follow you and see, and see all your success. Thank oh, you thank again. You so much. It was so lovely to be on your show. I love it. You just made me yeah. so happy. See, this is a morning routine. Woo, I feel so good yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Get your day started. I feel amazing as well. <laughs> Thank you for your time and your energy today and all your friends for coming by. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please comment and tell us what was your favorite part, your favorite habit that you are going to try out for yourself today. Comment below. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I will see you at the top of your best morning routine ever. Stay blessed.